Factors affecting enzyme activity. There are several factors that affect the rate at which enzymes can do their job and the effectiveness by which they can do their job. And the first one is temperature. Enzymes become increasingly effective as temperature rises until a plateau is reached slightly above body temperature. Beyond this point, temperature increase will cause a decrease in enzyme activity as they're denatured. So what you can see here is that at a particular temperature, and we'll call it T, the reaction is going on, whatever the reaction is that's going on inside the human body, but it's going on at a very, very low rate. As temperature increases, the rate of reaction actually increases. And this continues fairly steadily. And at 37 degrees Celsius, we have a pretty good rate of reaction. And this is the rate of reaction at normal operating temperature. Now, if you increase body temperature, the rate of reaction will continue to increase, but not for very many more degrees. And eventually, you'll reach a very short plateau where even if you continue increasing the temperature, the rate of reaction will not increase. And then very abruptly, the rate of reaction drops off to zero. What's happening here is basically death because at this point the enzymes that catalyze reactions are beginning to denature and reactions can no longer take place so the reaction rate is zero. Now, When you're sick sometimes your temperature will go above 37 degrees Celsius into this zone and your rate of reaction will increase and presumably that's actually going to help you because it helps you fight off the infection. Dangerously high temperature changes however can be fatal and these need to be avoided. Another factor that affects enzyme activity is pH. Each enzyme has its own narrow range of pH at which it functions. Most of them are around pH 7. The wrong pH changes the enzyme conformation and therefore its active site. Well, most enzymes do function ideally at pH 7. So for example, uh, if you add an acid to an egg, you'll see that it will denature. And sort of the analogy down below is showing all these paper clips which are, are meant to represent the proteins in the egg. And when they are affected by the pH change, they actually change their shape and the way they interact with each other. And we don't want that happening to the enzymes in our body. So most enzymes function best at a neutral pH where the enzymes won't be denatured. There is an exception, however. Here's where most of our enzymes operate. But we do have an enzyme that operates at about pH 2. And that's so that it can actually function within the stomach. And the name of the enzyme is pepsin. And it begins the initial breakdown of the proteins that we eat. It needs to function in pH 2 because that's the pH of the stomach. And the stomach's pH is actually pH 2, not so that we can use the acid to digest our food, but basically to kill any bacteria which have enzymes of their own that don't function well at pH 2, any bacteria that we may accidentally eat, and we do eat a lot of it. Another factor that influences activity of enzymes is substrate concentration. So when a certain quantity of enzyme is present, increasing the substrate concentration beyond a certain point will not increase the rate of reaction. Here's what happens. When you have a very small amount of substrate and quite a number of enzymes, all of the substrate particles will be in the active sites of the enzymes and the reaction will take place and all of the substrate particles will be converted to the product. However, if you add more substrate, the enzymes get a lot more busy and eventually when you have a very high substrate concentration, all the active sites are ac occupied by substrates and the enzyme cannot catalyze the reaction any faster because every single enzyme molecule is occupied with the substrate. That limits the speed of the reaction. If we look at it graphically, it looks like something like this. If you have zero substrate, of course you have zero rate of reaction. Um, doesn't matter how many enzymes you have if you don't have any of these. Okay, but you add a little bit of substrate and you're going to get a pretty slow rate of reaction because you just don't have that many chemicals to react. That would be kind of the equivalent of there. If you add more substrate, you'll have a higher rate of reaction. But there comes a point where adding any more substrate is not going to be helpful because the enzymes are completely busy doing their job. So we call this 
the point at which the enzymes become saturated. So what could you do if you wanted to increase the rate of reaction? and your enzymes were basically occupied with all the substrate they could possibly manage. The only way that you could increase this rate of reaction is if you added more enzymes at this point to accommodate all those substrates. Now there's a great video you should watch. It's the I Love Lucy at the Chocolate Factory video and it's a great analogy to enzyme saturation. Have a look. Another factor that affects enzyme function is enzyme concentration. Providing there's enough substrate, the more enzyme you add, the more substrate produced. And this limits the overall rate of the reaction. If you look at this graph, there's an interesting question here. Why does it not begin exactly at zero, zero? The answer has to do with the fact that reactions do occur in the absence of enzymes. So if you had zero enzyme and you were doing a reaction between glucose and glucose, you would still get some product, maltose, but it would be very, very little in a very long time period. So the rate of reaction would be very slow. As you add enzyme, provided you have enough substrate, you are going to get a faster and faster rate of reaction. So the so reactions occur in the absence of an enzyme, but too slowly to be useful to an organism. Another factor that affects enzyme function is inhibition. And we'll take a look at this one separately in another video.